boys and girls. It's me, Mrs. Baker, in my home. I'm so glad you can join me today. I have a very, very special book to read. And here I have a little metal pail. Now, for those of you who have read this book before, you probably know what book I'm going to read. But I am going to read the book called Blueberries for Sal. And one thing I've learned over the years is unless you have a metal bucket, you might not understand the words that the author uses to talk about picking blueberries and putting them into a metal bucket. So listen to the sound when something is in a metal bucket. Ready? Do you hear that? That makes an interesting sound, doesn't it? So be listening when I read the book Blueberry for Sal's for the sound of something going into this metal bucket. Are you ready to listen? Because I'm ready to read. I'm so glad you're here today for the reading of Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. Here we go. Blueberries for Sal. one of my favorite books. Blueberries for Sal. One day, little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail and her mother brought a large tin pail to put her berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother, and then we will have food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tin pail. Did you hear that? She picked three more berries and ate them. And then she picked more berries and dropped one in her pail and the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. I bet those tasted good. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It didn't sound kaplink because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back and though she really didn't mean to, she pulled out a very large handful because there were so many berries right up close to the one she had just put in. Oh, her mother's very good at picking blueberries, isn't she? Her mother stopped picking and said, Now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Look at her. Isn't that a pretty picture? Her mother went back to picking. But little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. <laughs> Do you remember what a blueberry tastes like? Hot in the sun when you're picking? On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little Bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Little Bear followed behind her mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little Bear stopped now and then to eat some berries and then she had to hustle along to catch up. Galump, galump, galump. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat right down in the middle and ate blueberries. Well, 
over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all the blueberries she could reach from where she was sitting. And then she started out to find her mother. She heard a noise around a rock and thought, oh, that's my mother walking along. Do you think it's her mother, boys and girls? Ah, oh, it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and they flew away. Caw, caw, caw. And then she heard another noise in the bushes and thought, well, that surely is my mother. I'll go that way. But it was little bear's mother instead. She was tramping along, eating berries, and thinking about storing up food for winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. Uh-oh. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump and he thought, that is my mother walking along. It was a mother partridge and her family. They stopped eating berries and they hurried away. And then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, well, this surely is my mother. I'll hustle that way. The page is stuck. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. But Little Bear hustled right along behind. And Little Bear and Sal's mother and Little Sal and Little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. Oh, look at that. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear. And she said, Little Bear, munch, munch. Eat all the gulp can possibly hold. Goop. Little Sal said nothing. She picked three berries and dropped them. Kaplink, kaplink, in her small pail. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make a noise like a plunk. Ooh, she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where's Little Bear? She took one good look and she backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. And then she turned around. She walked off very fast to hunt for Little Bear. Oh, no. Little Sal doesn't seem scared. Little Sal's mother heard Little Bear tramping along behind and thought it was Little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. She's going to be surprised too. Little Bear patted up and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste just a few of what was inside, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. Now, Sal, said little Sal's mother without turning around, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. And little bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost spilled the entire pail of blueberries. Oh, naughty little bear. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped. <gasps> My goodness, you are not little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. And then she turned and walked away quickly to look for little Sal. I bet both mothers are very, very nervous right about now. She hadn't gone very far before she heard Kaplink, Kaplink. She knew just what made that kind of noise. 
Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard a rustling sound and stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of noise. <gasps> well, Little Bear and his mother went down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way, and full of food stored up for next winter. And Little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill, picking berries all the way, and drove home with food to can for next winter, a whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. And look at that, boys and girls. There they are in the kitchen, canning their blueberries. That's my favorite page. I love that. I remember looking at that for hours when I was a little girl. Well, boys and girls, this has been so fun reading to you. And I am reminded to say that this is in accordance to fair use guidelines. And it has been recorded by Baker Company in cooperation with Elkins Public Library and the town of Canterbury. It's for non-for-profit educational use only and cannot be copied or sold without written permission of myself, Elkins Public Library, or the town of Canterbury. I hope you've enjoyed this reading of Blueberries for Sal. It's one of my favorite books. And remember, boys and girls, join me every day for a new video. You saw the bears in this book. I think there's some more bears to come. Do you miss your friend Harold? Tune back in soon to see some more wonderful stories. And until then, remember, I love you and I am so proud of you.